before I start the, this uh, section, so just highlight to you that today is 11 of March. So we cover this, uh, today topic is a uh, grocery industry and the key function implementation. Then further, further up the training session before on 25th of March, uh, that one you cover the data mode sales and purchase cycle plus promotion module. This is a, we already preset the topic, but anyway, uh, I hope that today we have a survey form to let you to fill up, see whether this topic to change or not. Later on, we will be further announce. Huh? So without further delay, we come back to the, this. Uh, before we start our solution, I think all of you need to know uh, when you want to promote any user in the market. So we need to let user know the overall solution of our smart can provide it. Basically, this is our one of the overview of our solutions. Means from offline to online, all to all total management solutions. This chart will cover how to present your coming solution. You can cover from offline area to online area. Okay, so from here, from here you can see, we need to let merchant know, okay, our system comes from back end. Back means that we have an inventory control, we accounting modules, they produce all the reporting you want, and then manage the customer for wholesaler industry. From there, we expand our business to the point of sale system. Where by point of sale, you can engage with the payment collection, e-order collection, and then do the, some promotion, and then do the loyalty program to engage with customer for the fund and post. From there, we can send to the online. Means that online, we can integrate two parties. One is direct to our web store, the other into the marketplace. So in the integrate with the web store, we, we can not only we cover the own web store, we also can cover the another business model. We call it the self pickup solution plus express delivery. Then from there, can extend the and the multi alert also can. So this is our expansion of the business to the any merchant in the market. From there, we also engage the merchant to invest in the loyalty program because nowadays the business is very, very competitive. So loyalty program, you play a very big, uh, how to make your company, make your competitive the market. Invest loyalty to at least help your company to maintain your customer group and then increase the member with the right loyalty program. From there, from loyalty program, you know the uh, customer purchasing behavior. From there, you can make a right decision to make sure your business is going well. So this is our solution, but some customers say that they have their own website. In this scenario, also we can use our third party integration, we call web API. The web API, we, we can incur it two ways. One way is tiring to our back end, means that link to the mode. The other way is they can link to our power sales. So this is uh, another weapon you can share with your merchant. Let them feel that when you purchase our software, you can extend the business to a multi-business type if they wish to. So this is our solution you should share to the merchant when you talk to our solution. So for all of you, you, we talk, talk, talk. So how we can let customer feel that easy to understand our solution? Just I'll show you the video. Actually, the video you can download from where? Actually, you can download from our smart YouTube, the Smart Egg Solution account. Inside the YouTube, you can get a lot of video. In this video, we will present the different of the different of the type of the solution. So now share is the number fifth one. This is a two shop hardware smart clientele. This is one of the just I'll show you. Last two weeks, I think I show you this GMAT Smart Air Kitation. This is another uh, video. So there are a lot of videos there. Kindly visit our YouTube. Kindly visit our video so that you can get a more video to present to your customer. This will help you to shorten the uh, demo section. The other way to let you easy to capture the user, so try to use our sharing section in our Facebook. Kindly check, kindly subscribe our Smart Post Facebook. From there, you get a lot of the uh, sharing story. 
So from there, you can share to your prospect. So that is in a way you can capture the new prospect user from Facebook channel. So this is what we do for you to do the sales to push. Not only that, so we're preparing the material like by industry. Like today, we try to build a grocery selling process, the industry area. PowerPoint, this one is very useful. Kindly use this one to introduce the customer with this PowerPoint. Inside this PowerPoint, you cover our, our all our solution for smart. Okay. Further, we'll build another three uh, specified industry by pharmacy, grocery, hardware shop. This is on the way to building the another uh, tools for you to present to the you potential customer. So all the material we put inside our G Google Drive. So anything you want to check, for example, for bosses, you want to know the latest price, you go to the Google Drive to download the pricing, or you want any the webinar video, you can go to Google Drive, the partner keys, inside the folder called webinar video, you can get a lot of the video in this folder. Like you want to know, understand the Dynamo program you, or any functionality, you can go to Smart Dynamo. Inside, got a lot of the uh, training material regarding of our Dynamo function. So this is all the ready document already put under the G Drive. So for all of you to easy to download. Uh, if you don't know the link, you can call us, then we will further send the link. Okay, now we come back to our today's objective. Course industry. Do you know what kind of the basic requirement when you talk to this group of people? So we need to understand, actually under this industry, how they manage the item maintenance, then how to manage stock costs, and then the how to manage the stock level when come to minimum level, how to manage. Lastly, they always talk about how to increase the sales. Because the grocery industry now is very competitive in the market. Are you agree on that? That's why today we cover this. Let, 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 let me show you how we convince this kind of group of people. So here we are spread, I uh, will group this under three category. So our prospect actually two group are uh, hypermarket and mini market. So hypermarket and mini market, what the different? Uh? Hypermarket is big skill customer. There's maybe more than. Uh, 10,000 item, but mini market is less than maybe 1,000 item. This is quite two group of the prospect. So different prospect, the different requirement. So let's go to the our item master. When you talk to the this group people, always emphasize how to manage the multi UM. Yours, you know, this group of people, the purchasing the time they using the bigger size, the multi, the bigger size the measurement like cotton, but we sell is sell by pieces. That's why it is very important how to manage multi UM. Then when you implement the multi UM, they're facing the channel of the in the stock tick. Okay. So in, in the stock tick uh, cycle, how does dynamo program to help you to easy way to store the stock tick? So this part uh, you should learn the stock tick cycle how to simplify the process way. Let the user feel that implement this multi UM is easy for them to in terms of catching the pricing, purchasing price, or stock take cycle also easy. Okay. Then secondly, main for item master, they always emphasize the multi barcode. So how system to manage multi barcode. Then thirdly, they will do a lot of the uh, hamper selling. Hamper selling, there are two types. There's a, uh, first of all, they may be do the SMB item first or they want to do the auto pump. So these two uh, cycle will help the user to simplify the process depend on the sizes of the uh, industry. Like hypermarket, usually do the SMB for the pump. But for small scale like mini market, they usually use auto pump. So this is the more the concerns how to simplify the process. Then lastly, for the wing item, you know, uh, grocery industry, they're selling the fresh food, vegetarians, this kind of things. So they need a weighing machine to do this kind of transaction. But in the weighing machine, they have two types in the market. Okay. So same to apply to the different uh, group of the 
prospect. So we have two types, what you call dialing machine, then whereby this mention is the machine with dialing to cashier side. They mean in this environment, there's no print barcode counter, okay, just dialing the cashier. The other group is they set up a counter to do the weighing machine, to the weighing, weighing the item by print the barcode, stick to the item, then go to cashier to print the payment. These two types. Huh? So let me show you the number one dialing machine, how we do that. So today I, I didn't uh, talk about how to do the setting, but later on, Jim Fat will show you how to do the setting. Today I show you we have a two types of the machine can link to our smart. That is a core DG plan and the other core, the we call it C, what they call it, uh, this is called the NS, NS OS2 to This is 75,200. But for the DG brand, the model called DS425, user price is 2200. So what the difference between these two? So if you uh, invest LS, this machine model, 1002, means that this is cheaper. But of course, he, the life, lifetime using this machine may be maximum three years. And then accuracy wise, the accuracy wise is more less than this, the DG, DG is more reliable. The, Weighing uh, sensitive is more sensitive, and then the durable may be more than four to five years. Depend of the user requirement. But when come to the customer who would like to invest the dialing, usually they prefer to this endless plan. Why? Because cheaper. But this group of people they're looking for cheaper solution. So majority my partner sell is sell this package Allen's OS2 CXP. Is 1200. So let's just share with you. If you're interested to purchase this uh, machine, you can direct deal with this M dot. He is our distributor for this machine. For DG, you can go to the high scale trading. So he's a, he's a DG supplier. Of course, the DG supplier in home ratio, they got many distributors. You can look for your local distributor, all right? So this is a weighing machine, the pricing selling sections. So let, let move on to another barcode label weighing machine, whereby this is a common practice in market. So this is our common uh, machine we only link, link with. You can invest with a DG brand. So this is a common but pricing is minimum 4,350. So this is uh, for the those hypermarket industry users, they will set up the counter for print the barcode label. This is the machine you can uh, looking for. You can go to Lazada to search about 4,300 plus. Huh? So this can link to our smart. Later on, Jim Fat will show you how to do this implementation for these two, two types of the machines. So Jim Fat will show you all the way. So I didn't cover that. Okay. This is we call the majorly the Grocery uh, merchant will concern about the item management. Of course, when it comes to the purchase cost, the price side, so we need to let the merchant know this is very important for them to have an overview when you do some purchasing costs. They need, they need to know the last purchasing cost is this uh, cheaper or compared the now purchasing. So how do you see for the tracking the purchasing price? That's why in this scenario, we need to encourage the merchant to use our smart inspector. Smart inspector is one of the tools very useful for the purchaser have an overall picture when you do the purchasing, they will know when you clean this supplier, this item, the last purchase cost is how much. From there, the purchaser will know are they purchase the right cost or not. This will help the company to save your cost. If without this checking, simple add in the new purchasing will be increase the cost of uh, product. This is very important for the mini market industry because the cost is really, really sensitive. Because the margin for certain item is really low margin. That's why purchasing history is very important. So implement this smart inspector very important to keep track of the purchase history. Secondly, how to easy for them manage the reorder level? Because you know, mini market 
a minimum item maybe to four to five thousand. You want let the boss to think which item should need to reorder. How they manage, it's very difficult. So they need to manage the minimum level stock in individual item. From there, we can then a reorder listing for them have overview which item should be reordered. Then for the purchase cycle, we can use a fast order list. So this is really useful to let the purchaser just click on fast order list. System auto will free up the reorder quantity for them. Instead, they want to one by one to determine what quantity they need to order. This will simplify the order process because this fast ordering setting is based on your item fast setting. When the stock below this minimum level, what kind of the quantity I need to order back. So this is a simple way to manage the reorder cycle. The other third thing, maybe you can implement the supply SKU. Why is important for a certain of supplier? Because for me market, there are a lot of supplier, but some of the item they have specified to take some the special item for certain supplier. With this cycle, how to make sure the purchase is the right item. So the best way is we use the supply SKU become my purchase order the stock ID. That will minimize the wrong key in the purchase code. So that when the order you raise from PO send to a supplier, there is always a correct item from this supplier. Then from you, when you order from this kind of scenario, when you purchase look, when you do purchasing for this cycle using purchase SKU, your selection also more accuracy. You won't say wrong wrong item from different supplier. So this is how to minimize the purchase cycle instead of the correct item, the costing. So this is more they are emphasized in the purchase cycle. Lastly is in purchase cycle, we need to know which item should order. So we have we always uh, let the merchant know to easy to make the purchase cycle. So we have a one report called the stock aging report. So what the meaning of this purchasing report? This is help the merchant to understand when you have this late uh, stock aging this thing come out, you check the, your item. If your item the aging for more than five months, they mean 151 day to 180 days. In this column means that this item is still not sell. It's still in your stock, in your warehouse. Meaning to say this item is not sellable. But when come to this uh, aging report, you will understand when the aging more than this kind of period, they means that this item supply will be chasing your money. Because normally the aging for the stock for supply maybe four months. That's why from this report, for those items more than four months, they mean this item cannot sell, but you need to pay to your supplier. This is how to detect in stock aging report, you know which item you should take some action, make sure this item sell off so they get the money to pay back to your supplier. This is uh, one of the report to help you to manage your cash flow so that you can make a uh, payment on terms. So this is how to share the supply cycle to your merchants. Of course, lastly, can you promotion how to make sure your item can sellable in your wholesale cycle? We have a lot of promotion, but we do not cover. So before you can change the promotion, but you have to some report to help you to identify which item should do the promotion. Like here, I mentioned here is like top sales, top, top aging, stop break even report and stop item profit. So this is a mainly useful for the merchant to understand your sales cycle and your profitable items and break even report let you have an idea which item should go for promotion. So, but today we will cover this. Maybe in next session we cover on that. Then lastly, very important is membership. So in our Dynamo, we can do two types of uh, membership. One is the traditional way. In Dynamo, we have a redemption uh, counter for do the normal redemption uh, the stock. But we always encourage the user use our Inca apps to do all membership the sales cycle. Am I right? Okay, basically, 
This is short sharing of our today regarding the grocery industry, the major concern from this kind of people. This is our sharing, but in your end, maybe if idea, maybe future you can share with me so that we can uh, make this grocery industry the more the meaningful of the scenario push. So this is my final view from my experience. In the future, this document I share with you will be more input. If you all of you have some idea, you can share with me so we can further enrich our this sales document. All right. So, so this is some sharing on my slide regarding the course industry. Simon sharing. So I'm Chen Fat. So my colleague all call me is Afat lah. Okay. So today I will share about some of the basic setting for the grocery industry. Okay. So today we will cover. Today I will cover seven topic lah for the uh, this grocery. So first is uh, we will cover the how to set up the multi UM item for grocery item. Okay. So sometimes uh, for this multi UM features actually able for user to sell and purchase the product in any UM that user business need. So it also can define the UM for various type of, of transaction and all the sales and purchase documents from the system is we also support to do this uh, multi UM definition. So actually for the grocery actually like this Coca Cola. So actually, uh, when the grocery user they bought from the supplier actually by carton, but sometimes they will sell it by loose by can or pack. So and our system we able to link all of this together. Okay. So next. So how we create the multi OM stock for this uh, example Coca Cola. So actually, we create the base UM first, uh, the can item. Then, at the system stop maintenance here, we can click more for the from the base item. We click more. Then we use this one, click multi UM stop to create the pack item and the carton stock item. Okay. So first. After we just now we click this one, create multi UM stock. Actually, the system will auto capture the stock ID sent with the can. And then the barcode, we need to scan the pack item, the barcode, lah, not the can item. <coughs> okay. So, description here actually, we, if based on our practice, if cannot, actually, the system will capture the description sent with the base item. If can, we can try to practice to put the column. This one four can per pack means uh, this pack item at least uh, got the four can inside on the receipt description there. So at least the uh, when the user sell it, then they know this one is under four can. But most important is based on this setting. Okay, since we already set the base item by can. So when we set the pack, we have to set this item for pack for the UM. Then the UM rate, we have to set. This one is a uh, four can per pack. That means we set the multi UM item for the another level. Then we have to set this one is calculate by pack. But under this pack, we have to set inside of four can. That's why here we got put the base UM here. So actually the price, we also, the system will capture, we auto calculate. If let's say just now we set uh, 199, 1.99, then if let's say with times four, actually system will calculate times four for you but some of the user they will sell the price is cheaper then we have to set the price as well if let's say you don't, uh, the user don't want to follow the price 1.99 times four okay so if let's say we set the button we set the button also 
based on the base item to set more and then we create the multi um stop so for the pack uh, for the carton item we also have to scan the barcode for the carton item then the um we set carton and then the rate we for 24 okay. so based on the after we do all the setting just now the multi um actually we can at the stop maintenance here, we got a function to view all the multi UM information for the item we just now reset. So we can base on this screen, all of these three items is got linking together. Okay, so when we when the user purchase the item carton from the supplier so here user actually is easier to key in the data by carton then even here you we can see this one that key in 10 carton so system will auto capture 10 carton for them and then the sales is why actually the user can sell by carton pack or can also can at the post system there, user also available to capture all of the multi um item. Nah. That means even the, uh, the user customer want to sell by, uh, want to buy it, the item by can, carton, or pack also can. Ah, okay, just now how come I say the, the name have to put 24 per can per carton or 4 can per pack? Here, if let's say you don't put system, you will see all of three items, it will same name. That's why when the cashier they scan, how come all of three same name? Are? What the different? If let's say they don't have put the barcode column. So this one is for easier to cashier to check when they after they scan, is it the item? Is it under the carton or by pack? Okay. So based on the setting, even the uh, the stock maintenance there, we can see the multi um balance quantity for all just now. We if let's say they got key in, but you also have to take note of the balance quantity. Actually, three of this item, the balance is got linking one. Now. You can see the screen here, we got 79 can actually also equal to 3.29 carton and then 19.75 pack. That's mean user only can select one of the item to see the balance so at the balance quantity listing here actually we capture the base as a balance stock item for easier to user uh, no misunderstanding but if let's say user want to see the report by balance quantity follow the every multi unit here actually we can view by stock balance inquiry. Here we can check by the outlet. Different outlet got different the can the unique item we can see from here. So this one we can check on the stock balance inquiry. This one it actually is the inventory module there. Then we select the inquiry screen. Then we can see the stock balance inquiry. We will set the multi barcode. Okay, how come okay, for the multi barcode this picture actually able for user to sell the product in different barcode lab for the same item and then when they sell when the user doing the business also easier lab. okay because some of the user they take the stock from different supplier or different batch item but actually the item is same then user able to insert the multi barcode to solve their this problem lab. Okay, for this one example, sometimes uh, usually the packing is like this at the left hand side for this uh, barcode. But maybe the Chinese New Year also got a Coca Cola. Then maybe the barcode is different, but actually it's same item for for us. Then user want to sell, it actually it's the same price, only just the packing is different. Then the barcode is changed. Then user can try to set at the uh, stock maintenance there 
more here we can put the multi barcode assignment so user can set the different barcode the, or the new barcode as here then for the post system to sell both also can sell even uh this the old barcode or new barcode and system also can capture but this one actually uh, even uh different but even it's different barcode but actually the stock actually is the same not even they what which one they sell we see the balance stock actually is the same one so even the you issue the invoice invoice here also can see the different barcode for them then if let's say some of the user they scan to do the invoice they want to capture the SIP follow the barcode to capture the sales then they also can select both different the barcode <laughs> okay so next is set the view app okay how we say the grocer we need to set the view app okay for this okay view app matrix is our system is a view of material assignment to able the user to sell the combo or package with detect the quantity stock item which selling inside the buy combo or package. Then if some time to do the adjustment after they sell the combo or package or before they sell, then for this one example, when the Chinese user, uh, most of the grocer they will do the hamper. So hamper the item actually is from their shop some of the item then they have to do the hamper for their customer to buy it okay so based on this we can set the individual so cause the hamper inside got individual store item up. and then we have to set up first off and then we have to set up the stock for the hamper that's mean if let's say here got a lot of item, then we have to make sure all of this item is inside our system. Then we, when we do the hamper, we have to make sure we have to create one more item is called hamper. Okay. So after we set the hamper, we have to come into this one bill of material bill and assignment. Then here we have to insert this hamper inside got what item we have to insert to here then that means when we sell this hamper item they will deduct for this uh, stock as well lah. okay so if user want to pack uh, want to pack the hamper file unit so we have to go to stock assembly cost after we set this one, we have to make sure the user want to pack how many hamper lap for this uh, hamper item. Okay, so that's why we have to set. Okay, here we have to go to stock assembly there to make sure the file pack cost based on this stock assembly. Here the stock ID actually can find out the item which already set the BOM item so here we put five after we key in five here means system will calculate if let's say i want to do five hamper it will deduct how many stock for the this five hamper so after we set the stock assembly then here we can see the hamper got the five unit that means after we set the five unit actually here every item is got 20 unit then after i set the five unit system will auto deduct from the system so then we can check the balance stock for this hamper that's why uh, just now we set the bom actually here you can see auto bom item the check checkbox so if let's say i don't have take this check box, that checkbox uh, we have to come to stock assembly to set up the for the hamper item cause what's the difference we set the auto bm or auto no uh, no or, or don't have set the auto bm 
Okay, if let's say you got set the auto BOM system, you auto apply the stock assembly for you, but you cannot check the balance stock for the hamper. If let's say the user they want to check the balance stock for this hamper, then we have to untake this one auto BOM. If not, user at the end cannot check how. Uh, this hamper still got how many units? Okay. So here we also can do the stock assembly. If let's say after the Chinese New Year, the hamper maybe can't finish to sell, then user can uh, unpack the hamper. Then we can do the disassembly. Then system will um, will take up all the what. The balance to insert back to different individual item. Then uh, at the end, the hamper balance stock quantity will deduct as well. Lah. Okay. So now I got another example for the this BOM. This one actually uh, is about the Cause just now we set the setting is no take the auto BM. If for this one, I can suggest for to take the auto BM. Cause this one user actually got sell pack A for this one and pack B. Then at the same time, they also got to the combo A plus B. Means this one actually they don't have purposely to pack together. But when the user, uh, when the user customer they take this together, then they will become the combo. So user, uh, the seller no, no need purposely to pack it as combo, la, but they can prepare the barcode when the user, the when the customer buy this combo, they can auto-capture this one is a combo. Okay. So for here, we have to set up three items. One is the combo item packed together one. Then sec third and second and third is the different individual item. Okay. For here, same as just now, we have also at the combo item there to set this one bill of material BOM assignment. Then we have to let system know this one combo got what item here. Then here we take the auto BOM. Okay, so here, after we do the setting, so cause we don't have to do the stock assembly, then here actually always we will see the combo is the zero pack. Then we just can see got the individual item, the balance stock. Okay, so when we sell the combo, so system will auto generate the stock assembly. Like the dislike. So at here, system will show from this stock assembly. Here will show the remark. This one is auto BOM generated by just now this test sales number. So that means this one, uh, if let's say you sell, you sell, uh, the seller sell this kind of the product combo, then no need to purposely to set the, this one stock assembly. Uh. So at the end, uh, you see uh, the stock always we for the combo item, you always is the zero. When they sell the item, they will auto deduct from individual item. Then when they sell the individual item, also no, no issue. Uh. That means they can uh, got few choice to for the seller to select. Okay, so here got some tips up uh, for the new function. I think uh, on last version. Uh, okay, we got a quick entry function for this stock assembly. We can import by Excel. That means you want to do the assembly or disassembly, you can import by Excel. So it will faster for some of the user. If let's say they got too many hamper or like combo item, they can import by Excel. It will faster. Okay. So next, 
Next, we set up the open price and open quantity. Check. How we say this feature can use for the closer? Okay. So for the closer, they can sell the item by the season price. Because some of the item maybe their every day is different. Then uh, if let's say every day is different, then user have to every day to change the price. Then it will take time. Uh. That's why we got the open price and open quantity function. Uh. Then cost, how come the open quantity are uh, cost and you see this screen. If let's say we set the open quantity, when they scan the item, they will auto prompt the quantity. If let's say we set the open price, it will auto prompt the pr price screen for user to key in. That means it will follow what the user key in the price or quantity, it will auto capture from here. If let's say after they key in the quantity is the five, then it will capture the five quantity. It will not let user uh, don't forget to key in. Uh. Cause here, maybe some of the business they still use uh, this one old type of weighing skill. So when they key in the item, then system will put this screen to let them to faster to key in, then they make their business operation small, smoke a bit. Lah. Okay. So now next. For next, we will set the weighing machine integration. As just now, uh, Simon just now got mentioned, for weighing machine integration is uh, available at our system. But here, actually, at our system, we got two kind of the weighing machine can do the integration. One is the this kind of the sample, like the left hand side. This one, after user the they scan the barcode. And after they weigh the uh, item, they will print up the barcode for the cashier to scan the item. Second is, this one is auto-linking. Once they weigh the item at the weigh machine, they will auto-send the weight the weight for to our post system. So this is got two kind of the weighing machine can do integration at our system smart here. La. <laughs> Okay, for this one weighing machine with the barcode printing, how the flow, this is the flow to, for the system, how we integrate. For the first, we have to set up the item, then we will export the item to, for the weight, the yeah, weighing machine application to import it to our, to this one weighing machine. Then, for weighing machine, here weighing the item, here we will print out the barcode for the post system to scan. So this is the flow for detail here. Uh, for next, I will, we will show you the detail. So for here, as a usual, we create the item as a usual, but have to take note is for the barcode, if can we set the five digit, and then the UM have to KG, and then we have to take the weight item here. Okay, then we have to, after we set the item, means we got the listing already. Then how we create the file for the weight machine to import. Okay, so here actually at our Dynamo, the post management module, we got the setup and then the poll setting there. Actually, got a function we call weighing stock export template. So we can use this text file to import for the user the uh, weighing machine to in, import it to the weighing machine. So for here, actually, uh, based on the weighing machine, the application, it depends what they need cost here actually the column what we chose is uh, based on the weighing machine software what they need cost some of the weighing machine need barcode then they will, we have to 
send the data, got the barcode name, and then the price packet. So based on this uh, notepad, the price actually no decimal one, but some of the weight machine is got need the decimal. That's when if let's say you got the, this kind of the things, you have to let our help desk or our sales side Simon there to know, then maybe we can see how to handle your case with the different template. Of course, this template is depends on the uh, the, app, the weighing machine application when you do the import. Okay, and then here we can use the define is a is it the weighing item or no weighing item? For here, for this template, N A means a not weighing item. For K G is a weighing item. So sometimes some of the item maybe they need to put uh, at the weighing machine there but no need to wait one but they have to get in the maybe how many pixels and print up the barcode for the sketcher to scan so that means here we got different settings we have to take note okay so as just now we, i said we get the this template notepad then we use the application weighing machine application software to import this kind of data to weighing machine. So if let's say the price is always different by maybe they got changed every day or by weekly or by monthly, then here we can use this Excel to import to this weighing machine. So different uh, weighing machine got different method. Of course, some of the weighing machine they will, once they get this one text file, they will auto import to weighing machine. Some of the weighing machine software, they have to manually need the user to click the import to for the weighing machine system. So this one have to take note because this one is different brand got different setting. Okay. So this is the sample from the weighing machine print up the barcode lab. Okay, from the weighing machine actually we got two kind of the barcode. One is always we use this one is a thirteen digit barcode. But now we also got support the eighteen digit barcode as well. So what's different? Uh? Okay, for eighteen digit barcode actually uh this kind of the barcode the user available to change the price. At the weighing machine. For this kind of 13 digit barcode, actually the price is follow what we input from the just now the text file. That means if let's say if you, you the user use this kind of 13 digit barcode, they have to use this one, always have to update the price follow this uh that Tap notepad to update up. For this one, maybe morning, the, some of the grocer item, maybe morning they update the price for use the notepad to update already. But maybe uh, afternoon or evening, the price they want to sell cheaper, then they want to make the price, unit price for the item want to cheaper a bit, then they can manually to change the price at the weight machine then our system will capture the price follow the the weight machine unit price okay so for this one per digit barcode this is the sample we once we scan the item they will capture the quantity and the price follow the system just now what we set okay here System also can capture by quantity, by the pieces. Okay, for here, you see the left hand side, the grip. The grip is uh, by weight. Then, we, when we scan this barcode, I, barcode system, we auto capture this one quantity and the unit price. Then, based on this quantity, they will get how many price at the end.
and then for the this one apple apple this one we use direct scan system also can capture one pixels if let's say here two pixels system also can capture but based on here actually we can see based on the this one barcode print out we can see the barcode in front and then behind is the unique from here we also can see here got the barcode in front and then here is show price that's why you can see a uh, uh, different prefix starting we can set different method okay now next we can show okay we can show you this one starting at the whole system setup there so based on the 13 digit actually uh not really 13 digit maximum we can set more than maximum 20 digit but if let's say 20 digit then we have to make sure the barcode cost now we set the standard is the five digit barcode if let's say some of the user they want to use six digit or seven digit then the barcode will longer a bit huh? okay from the inf if let's say from just now the barcode print up this one we can see the first two position is the prefix to define this one number eight until the 12 digit behind this one either is the item amount uh, item quantity or item price okay so here the number three until number seven here actually is present the barcode item and then number eight and the until number 12 here if let's say the amount or the or the price of the two decimal then we have to set behind that one two decimal so based on this post system setting so for two these two position here we can see one and two is the prefix either by quantity or by amount second uh, the third until seven is the barcode and then eight until 12 this one is the quantity or amount so if let's say the first two digit we set 88 then cost the quantity always uh sometimes we don't have to put the decimal point only the decimal point that's mean here we can set is zero that's mean this two digit behind uh if let's say this five last five digit is the quantity then behind we will put zero no decimal point if let's say behind last five digit is the price then we have to set got two decimal point and then starting 99 is the capture this one is the amount item means the price so next is the 18 digit barcode so usually the 18 digit barcode the barcode label is longer one they will slightly is rectangle if for the 13 digit the barcode usually is the square one so this this one you can we can see the barcode is longer a bit la. okay so here actually we got two example here we can see the first item by quantity then we can capture from this screen and then the belly the meat also can capture like this so how we setting these two so at just now the setting you can see the bottom for the system set up there you can see the new setting here here is the follow here got mentioned follow weighing machine price for this setting if let's say the user the price the weighing machine got this kind of the barcode print up then they can use this one to do the setting so here you we also can define from the barcode here the first two digit is the prefix and then 
number three until number five uh, until until number seven digit is the barcode. So this one barcode also depend on user, but if one we will suggest don't put too long because uh, this one is a maximum eighteen digit only. Okay, so here the number eight until twelve position this one for the item amount. So this one, if let's say got, we will assume the eleven and twelve is is the decimal point item the amount uh. That means if let's say from based on this one, we will capture this item is the thirty ringgit thirty three cent. And then the last five digit is the quantity. So here we can capture the quantity of three decimal or no decimal based on the prefix. For just now the 13th digit, the first two prefix is depends on prefix. If let's say the item is calcul uh, calculated by quantity or by the price, we can prefix it. It's, uh, 88 or 99 but this one actually is based on the the weighing machine uh. if let's say the weighing machine uh print up is 21 or 22 then we also can have to follow this or if let's say the weighing machine can follow our setting then we, we we just follow if no then we can we need to follow the weighing machine setting as well okay for here just now this one if let's say the prefix quantity for this one first two that's prefix. So if let's say we set the 20, that means this item barcode, the quantity is called decimal. If let's say we set prefix is 21, behind the quantity last five digit is without decimal. Okay, for this one, I can see. This one, if I set 20, that means this is a weighing item because always we have to capture the last three uh this one cost uh one kg is a uh, one thousand gram that's mean also have to capture last three digit for this one is the by gram that's mean this one is the uh, 822 gram so here we can set just now the prefix is 20 that's mean here we will capture got three decimal point if let's say we start the prefix is by 21, okay, the item you calculate it by quantity and then no decimal point. So for the weighing machine barcode pattern, this one 18 digit actually, let's say just now the parsley, we set three ringgit 79 cent at the system. So uh, when imports to weighing machine also follow this file. But if let's say the user change the price at the barcode label there, okay, barcode label there is a one unit three ringgit fifty cent. So when we capture the barcode system, we will capture it per unit three ringgit fifty cent, not follow the three ringgit seventy nine cent ID. So this is the the way. If let's say if user want to use this one eighteen digit then we can suggest for them to use this one. Then even the normal prices, 3 ringgit 79 cent, once they change at the, the price at weighing machine, it will direct to follow the weighing machine price once scan the barcode at a touch box. Okay, so here, just now we got a one type, is got to print up the barcode. This is the second type of the weighing machine. It will no need to print up the barcode. It will, it will auto capture the quantity directly send the quantity to our call system. Okay. Based on the setting, before we set, we send the data to the post. So the item of top have to take note is, the UOM have to catch it as well. Then we have to take the open quantity and then also need to take the weighing item as well. And then the weighing type 
the schedule. Okay, so now I will show you how the way machine send the data to post. So based on here, we can see this is a Atlas brand, then this model. Some actually this one is same with the, our just now the setting there. Have to take note. Okay, for here we send we with the item. Okay, here we can see this item is uh, 150 gram. So after we wait the item, we scan the item at the system. System here will auto capture the quantity. So the price will follow our stock maintenance there, set the unit price how much, then you will calculate this one. If let's say 150 gram, then here we will sell 500, uh, one ringgit 50 cent. Okay, let's say now we try. If let's say we increase the weight. Okay, here after it increase the weight, it's a 470 gram. So we try to scan another item. So when item, okay. Here system we auto capture how many quantity means it's 470 gram. Then system we auto calculate for you. This one is a four ringgit seventy cent. So this is the way if let's say user that's after they put the item browser sell uh at the weigh machine, they will direct sync the quantity at the post system there. Okay, so how we set up? So here we have Tangle at last plan and the model. And then this one, actually, we depends on what model, uh, after you take the, uh, what port you take. Uh, this one we set is the COM port. So make sure the your hardware it can link your CPU or the PC can put the COM port. Okay, here we come to system setup here. Okay, so here we have to take this one auto get quantity from weigh machine and then the model have to same as the, just now the Atlas OS 2X and then connect to which COM. So this one COM pop have to make sure your PC is under what COM pop. Up. Now this is the, uh, on our PC is a COM1. That's why we check, we, we put it a uh, COM1. So after you select, you can try to this check connection. Is it connected? Then we test. Then here we capture the result. If let's say here you put the item here. So here we get the quantity, the, the weight. And then here we can get the result when we click this one test. So directly to get. That means your you do the integration is successfully. So this is the model. We have to make sure using the same model and then the setting have to take note is from here, not this two. So based on the our integration, we got three kind of the way machine can support. Okay. So here is the sum of the sharing to set the receipt quantity. Because like, always our default receipt is the uh, always show no decimal point. That means you see this one, the, ba the belly item actually got decimal behind. It's 0 0.822 like that. Then if let's say we print out the receipt, always we show one. So we can set at the receipt format there. We right click at the quantity here to select the test format here. 
we can use this custom format we can do the setting like this so the hash trash behind we can see how many decimal you want to show at the receipt if you put three then system will show three so if let's say you start like this even the quantity for one it will not show the decimal if so only of the decimal item will show decimal only because sometimes we will set the number format if you we set the number format for this one one always will show one point zero 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 so it will a bit way up so that's why we can try to use this format setting so the receipt only will show the decimal for the item they got the decimal point <clears throat> so this is a sum of sharing to set the receipt format okay six is the post menu so for the post menu here so we can we got the features can apply for the stock if let's say some of the item no barcode or the heavy stock item we some of the people they maybe have to carry up to the counter to scan so the fast menu button will make them easier so this feature is able at the post management module there we can set the at the post menu here so here we can see got a fast selection menu post menu category and post menu so for the first setting we have to set the post menu category for here even your item there got a category but that one is for your inventory category only but for menu here you can set same with your inventory category or you want to set your own another different menu just for this menu category also can <clears throat> so here second after we set the menu category we have to insert the category under which menu if let's say you've got few menu to insert then you have to select the menu which one you want to set then you can insert the one the category for that menu so once you set the category at here this is the column you show at the post system so just now we set the menu as barcode for s barcode here we click the set category position on menu here we can see the page one page one is for this one because here you can see the here the four color circle here here is showing the page one if let's say second it will show second page of this one okay after we set the main the category then here we also can set the menu for the stock position on the category that means just now we set the category but the category got what item we have to set on this option then here after we set the category here you can see this category for newspaper what item you want to insert then you just insert here so here we can filter the method by category then you search the value will always show the item category if let's say you search the method is by brand or by group then the value will show by the brand and the group as well okay so this is the result we set just now we set the s barcode set the item here we can see the newspaper because here we set the newspaper then we can see the tray icon the menu here so here we can see the menu like this at the post system okay so what is the cost just now we still if they say based on this screen just now we already set the menu category uh, and then the main post menu so what is the whole fast selection menu okay so 
this is the way to set. So some of, if let's say you've got many menu, so you can set which one menu you want to show at the post. Maybe you've got many outlet. So you can set this one menu, maybe just for HQ outlet. Then maybe menu two is for different outlet we can set. If let's say some of the outlet need many menu, then we can set. Actually, for previous, we can set up to five menu only. But if let's say your system is upgraded to 2021.1 build one for the whole system, now we can support more than five menu. So here you can see this one, the uh, menu here, you can see got the scroll bar. Last time, got the limitation, just maximum five menu on it. But now you can more than five. If let's say, because usually we, we open the post system. The post system control actually, the screen is the scan the barcode one. So, because the based on this setting, the system setup, there we always select the barcode scanning. If let's say some of the user, they want to use this one post menu as the startup screen, then we can set on here. So this is some of the tip then for user easier, no need to always click this icon to change the screen. Unless they want to use the barcode scanning, the, it's the main screen, then they have to click this one, seal screen to change the screen to bubble scanning uh, or fast selection screen, uh, they can use this one to change it. Okay, last is the print barcode label. How come we need to print the barcode label? Because always we buy the item, actually item is ready, the barcode item, barcode ready. So maybe some of the grocer item, they don't have the barcode. So they can print the barcode from what they set and then they can print from our system if let's say they could buy the barcode printer. Okay, for example, this egg, they come is by grade, like this, 30 pieces. Then the supplier also won't stick the barcode for every egg. Lah. That's why this one is the original supply from supplier that don't have provide the barcode. But some of the grocers, they will be, they want to repack to like this smaller bit for some of the customer. Cause maybe some of the customer, they don't want so many eggs when they buy. So they will repack. So after repack, they can print their own barcode to this packing. So, we got the print barcode function at the inventory module report. And then we got two options to print the barcode. One print barcodes by what item you select or another one is by document. So now we will show the sample to print the barcode. If let's say we select the print barcode label from the, the this item suite. Okay. So here method one, after we select the item, direct insert how many copy. Then here we, sh we just select which format you will want. Then you will print up how many copy how to set. Lah. After you select here, then you select the number of copy. So here we got filter two item. Lah. So every item will print up 25 copy. Okay, method two is, after we select the item by stock or by barcode or by brand or by category anywhere else, then here we can click the select item into list, then system will prompt up at the screen here, then you can fill in how many copy for every barcode. Because just now we set 25, months. so here every item you should print 25, but some of the item maybe no need print so many then we can fill in the number of copy from here. Okay. Better three, after we select the item, 
we can key in the copy, how many copy you want. Then we can select into list here. Then actually here also we will print, uh, you can set the number of copy, click this one. Then all the item will follow 20 copy or 30 copy, how many you sell. Okay, method four is we can import by the Excel. That means you if let's say user got a barcode listing ID, then they can, they want to uh every item got different quantity they want to set that can set at the it at the Excel ID. Then we can use this one loop from Excel, then we select this file from this screen, then we click import. If the error if this rule don't have the take means when you import the item is no error if got error behind actually you can see uh what is the issue not valid barcode or not valid anything then you can see here behind okay for for here is the way we got four way to print up the barcode label from this barcode label screen Okay, another way is we can print the barcode label by document. That means here every item we, we start, maybe uh, we got a few kind of the document uh, like supply invoice, stock day, or store adjustment. When we set, we, we key in the document, we can follow the document, the item, the quantity to print up the barcode. For example, we key in the supply invoice. After we key in the supply invoice, we can select which invoice we want to print the barcode. Okay. Here, after we key in, then actually we can click this one, select into list. Okay. Print order by, we can actually uh, print by display this sequence or by barcode or by stock ID, we can follow the sequence. Okay. And then here, we can click the number of copy. If let's say when this uh, invoice we import already, but actually no need to print so many, we also still can adjust how many copy you want to print. So this method actually is save time for user to print up a cost. For example, stock transfer. If let's say the your user the user is got multi outlet, they transfer the stock to outlet A from outlet A to outlet B. Then the outlet B the the staff they don't need to search what item. They just find back the document number for the stock transfer. System will auto capture the stock book, how many they want to print up. So it will take, it will save time for the user. No need to print so many, no need to select what item, then how many copy they want to print, then no need to take that. Just select the document. System will import or filter the list what they select. So at the end of the summary today, uh, actually we got support to get in the, uh, the multi-UM features, able to check the multi-UM different stock balance more accurately. And then we got the handle the multi barcode for the same item code, but different supplier or different batch. Mm -hmm. Then we can we got to set up the bundle stock item by UM setting. And then we can flexible to change the item price and quantity by the open price or open quantity setting. And then got the weighing item integration with the weighing machine, easier for user to handle the weighing item. And then how to handle the non-barcode item by post menu, first selection and barcode print up. So this is the training. So thank you for everyone. Okay, so so can I ask one question? What difference between GIN and supply invoice? When to use? 
Okay, this is an under purchase cycle. If for, for those big companies, they have uh, two group people to enter the GIN and supply invoice. For warehouse, they usually key in the GIN. So when present GIN, normally the GIN is no pricing. That's why they got two documents called GIN. And supply invoice, when you reach to the office, only office girl will key in the supply invoice. In that particular invoice, they got cost. So this is how why we have two of document called GIN and supply invoice. But of course, when you key in the GIN, then you can update to the supply invoice. This is a normal process we handle. Lah. If not using account module, what is different? <coughs> no, actually no different. Actually the environment is only the practice of the staff, lah, how to handle. Some of the boss, they're not allowed warehouse the staff know the cost. That's why they have this kind of practice, uh, depending on your situation. Maybe they want to see the cost, as well, so they need to gain the invoice. GIN don't have cost history. So I to check for you, is it correct or not, your, your, your question? If the DO they send from the supplier, they got provide the cost at the DO, then they will key in the price at the GIN there. But sometimes, if let's say they got the price as well, I think they've got invoice. So maybe they directly can key in the invoice, no need to key in the GIN ID. If you open the spy inspector, I think you should see the thing. For those who request who would like to have a separate section, you can highlight to me or Unix or FAD so that uh, we can arrange separately. If the turning topic not not meet your requirements, all right? I think, okay, uh, I think we end here today. Anyway, thank you for all your participants. If you're facing any issue, kindly let us know. We try to help you, all right? Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time. Yeah, See you next all. training sections. Thanks all. Bye. Thanks.